So in this video, we're going to look at the good, bad and ugly when it comes to DPF's diesel particulate filters. Most modern diesels are fitted with them. It's a legal requirement in most areas that new vehicles being sold have a diesel particulate filter installed. And we're just going to look at why they do that what the benefits are of having a DPF in your car. We're also going to look at some very worrying downsides to having a DPF. And at the end, I'll just leave you to conclude what the lawmakers are actually doing and whether they should think more seriously about the requirements to have a DPF filter on the car or the requirements to keep the original factory DPF filter on your car, because there are some worrying statistics that I found while researching this video and chatting to people. And please let me know your experiences, whether you think DPFs are just a wonderful thing or whether you've experienced the bad or the ugly side of having a DPF problem. So let's look at the good. We'll keep this short, not gonna patronize you. Diesel engines, emit particles. When you breathe particles in, that's bad for you. That's bad for the lungs. People that suffer from asthma are particularly sensitive when it comes to these particulates that go out into the environment. So there is certainly a case there for reducing these particles that are being emitted from diesel engines. So the DPF filter was born, which is basically just something that collects those soot particles. When it's collected enough, it will go through a generation cycle where it's heated up and those particles are burnt off and go out into the environment. So the idea is that that keeps the engine clean and those particles that would otherwise hurt people are no longer being emitted from the diesel engine. It will over time suffer from ash residue inside the DPF filter. It's been burning off all those carbon, the sooty particles that have been collected. And as they burn off, they will leave that ash residue. So some of that will remain inside the DPF. So eventually that's going to require removal, replacement or professional cleaning. And there's various different methods to actually clean DPFs. And again, that varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. There's also arguments as well for increased fuel efficiency having a DPF fitted to your car. Just the fact that it's got the additional O2 sensors, lambda sensors, the pressure sensors in the exhaust, it's extra stuff to monitor what's going on in the engine and keep the engine burning as cleanly as possible and as efficiently as possible. So there's certainly a big debate as to whether DPFs are always going to improve your fuel efficiency. And that's something we're going to be discussing in a moment in this video. Please let me know in the comments what your experiences have been with DPF filters and regeneration. It's probably one of the topics I get most questions about. And I've done various videos that look into the merits of removing DPF filters, which I'll link at the end of this video for you. So let's look at the bad, the bad side of DPF. So they require maintenance. They have to go through that regeneration cycle where they burn off the soot. As that soot builds up, it's restricting the exhaust flow. It's reducing the efficiency of the engine. So it's got to dump more fuel in to warm the EPF up to get those hot exhaust gases warm enough to actually burn off the soot that the DPF has collected. These DPF regeneration cycles will affect your fuel efficiency. It's heating up the engine more than it otherwise would. These engines get pretty hot now with these DPF regeneration cycles. So a lot more fuel is going into the engine. So hopefully your DPF only needs a regeneration cycle once a month, but that's often not the case as a vehicle starts to age. Another bad side of DPF filters is it's another part that's going to need to be replaced in your car. And DPF filters are quite expensive. Replacing them with original equipment makers DPF filters is very expensive. There are some aftermarket ones around now. There are also high performance alternatives that can be fitted. Although the legality of switching out from an approved manufacturer one is often an issue in some regions and some areas. You need to check your local laws as to how far you can go when it comes to replacing your DPF. But it's another thing to maintain, look after and replace when it degrades. So that's another cost that the motorist has to bear. So if you're buying an old car, a used car, it's quite likely that very soon you're going to have to pay out for a new DPF filter. So now we're going to look at the ugly side of DPF. So in theory, on a new engine in lab conditions, the DPF is wonderful. It reduces the amount of particles that go out of the exhaust. So the measurements that are taken, the stats that you get on fuel efficiency, don't generally include a regeneration cycle. So that's giving a false impression as to how fuel efficient the car is. So when it's new and working efficiently, you are going to have that period of time where it goes into regeneration and it's dumping more fuel into the engine. So the fuel economy is going to be down for a period of driving. 
as the DPF ages, it's going to become less efficient. It's going to start getting that accumulation of ash and soot and carbon building up inside that just isn't removed by the heat cycle. So it's going to restrict the exhaust flow and that's going to affect the efficiency of the engine, reducing the fuel economy. As it starts to age and become less efficient, it becomes less able to go through those regeneration cycles. So it's quite possible to get a DPF that still just about works, but it's constantly going into a regeneration cycle because of the exhaust pressures. It's monitoring that the DPF is too full. It's trying to clean it off as best it can. And it's not quite getting there with each regeneration that it's doing. So you get locked into this cycle of always needing to go through regeneration on your DPF, which gets expensive and costs a lot in fuel. So case in point, talking to a friend who is quite fastidious in monitoring his MPG, he's got an engine that produces from the factory the claimed 48 miles to the gallon. In reality, he was only able to get about 40 miles to the gallon when he gets it. So that's quite typical. The manufacturers claim these ideal lab conditions styles of driving. The manufacturer's claim of miles per gallon is often not a true reflection of what people get in the real world. So that's what he was getting in the real world. But as the car started to age and the DPF filter started to clog up, it got to a point where he had to adapt his driving style just to keep the DPF filter from clogging up. So he was driving more aggressively. He was using higher RPMs. He wasn't worrying too much about fuel economy because that was just causing the DPF filter to clog up. So his fuel economy dropped to 26 miles to the gallon. So the situation really is you've got this device on your engine that's designed to reduce the emissions of the car, but to keep that device from working effectively, you've got to reduce the emissions of the car by driving it aggressively and putting a lot of heat and a lot of pressure and a lot of flow through the DPF filter. So please let me know your experiences when it comes to trying to keep an older DPF clear and whether you're getting into this cycle of nearly always needing to do a regeneration perhaps once a week rather than maybe once a month when you first got the car and how that's impacted your fuel economy over time. So in some areas, you're not allowed to remove the DPF filter. And in some areas, you're not even allowed to replace it with a higher flowing sports alternative. Now, I think that's a bit of an own goal. When you start looking at these engines when they get old, they're nowhere near as efficient as the manufacturer originally intended. Most drivers are getting on for half of the fuel economy or double the emissions that the car is meant to be producing. And that's something the driver could fix by installing a higher flowing sports DPF filter. So they're much more efficient than the manufacturer design ones. They generally have a larger surface area. They require less frequent regeneration cycles. So just putting an outright ban on changing the DPF filter just seems like an own goal when it comes to saving the environment, which is the overall intention of having this legislation in place. So in some areas, I've known dealers to actually be penalized and fined for selling these performance DPF filters or enabling people to do a DPF delete by selling a kit to achieve that on their cars. So I really think that's a short-sighted way of looking at the problem of emissions from vehicles. And here in the UK, in our MOT test, the annual test that your car has to go through when it's inspected, you need to meet a certain emissions criteria. So they test the emissions of each and every vehicle. That really should be the deciding factor in whether a car is legal to drive on the road, rather than the fact that a driver has maybe changed a DPF for a better flowing sports one or removed it completely because it's all about the efficiency of the engine. We want to keep our engines as efficient as possible. We want to use as little fuel as possible, which will have a result in net reduction in the emissions that are coming from vehicles. So DPFs do play an important role in reducing the harmful emissions. So I recently read a study about particles and their effect on human health. And it concluded that these smaller particles, the typical sort that these modern DPF filters are chucking out no longer just enter a person's lungs. They're more readily absorbed into the bloodstream and they seem to be creating extra problems within your circulatory system. So I'll drop a link to the study here. And I think this is a classic case of trying to fix a problem, but creating another problem with the unintended consequences. So we're effectively making the emissions from vehicles smaller and smaller. So rather than having the problem in people's lungs, it's now moved into their bloodstream. So is that an indicator that we should all move to an electric future? Do you think there are problems with electric cars that 
again, the manufacturers have tried to solve the environmental problems, but they've just moved the issue to another area and maybe created a whole host of other problems somewhere else that they're going to have to deal with further down the line. So DPF filters are important. They do help to reduce the emissions of the car. There's a big argument as to whether that is still beneficial for people's health or it's creating other health problems. But the long term effects of having an older engine with a DPF filter certainly seems to indicate that they degrade over time and it starts to get expensive for the driver who has to go through these more frequent regeneration cycles, burning more fuel just to keep it working effectively. So a lot of the time you have problems with DPF filters keep blocking up and you kind of suspect that it's the DPF filter that is at fault. But in reality, it's often another fault somewhere else in the engine. So the DPF filter is just collecting the soot, the unburnt particles that are coming out of the exhaust. So if the engine is running inefficiently, if it's not burning off all of the particles that it should, that DPF is working much harder than it otherwise should. So if the buildup of soot and particles inside the DPF is too great, you're going to degrade the performance of the DPF and suffer from great performance issues over time. But thanks for watching. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. If you haven't subscribed, please do so because we would love you to stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.